Hey y'all, my name is Sarah and welcome to my channel. So I've decided today is the day I'm going to go through everything I've purchased since January, give or take roughly, and have a super mega five month haul video. Hope you enjoy. I'll be right back. Gotta get stuff out of my travel kit. Okay, so the first thing I want to do is go through this giant stack of books and sketchbooks so I can get them off of my desk and enjoy the art supplies that are forthcoming. So this is a Stillman and Burn Epsilon sketchbook. I have made it into my nature journal and this sticker is by Lee Alexen. Um, and in fact, since we're doing a haul video, I just got these today in the mail. I got a set of owl stickers and a couple of tiger stickers. They're so cute! So I will put a link to her shop in the description box. I like these Epsilon sketchbooks because um, the paper is thin enough that you get plenty of pages in a book, but it's thick enough to handle light watercolor washes, um, certainly color pencils and inks. So I've been just doing little um, sketches of things I see on my walks when I walk our dog and I just put a little note about what I saw. And so what I'll do is I'll take a picture of the thing, whatever it is, and I'll go home and I'll identify it. And then I'll make a note of the name. And if it has a specific um, Latin version of the name, I'll put that in. Any little interesting notes about what I saw. Um, so for example, these irises are growing by a house down the street. And it turns out that they are um, a top 10 specimen. They um, were bred in 1911. They're very distinct. So I've just been putting little notes. Um, so the peonies in our neighborhood are about to bloom. So I've got um, a drawing of a bud of a peony and then our little plant in the front. And then once one blooms, I'll draw one there. So anyway, this is Stillman and Burn Epsilon. I just like these little handheld sketchbooks. They're so cute. And along those lines, I have three of the Talons Art Creation sketchbooks of the same size, pocket size. Guys, I can't even tell you. These sketchbooks are so awesome. They have 80 pages. They're so thick. They're thick boys. Um, the paper is a cream color. I would consider them fairly similar to the Moleskin Art Creation sketchbooks. Um, the paper is a little bit thinner in these, but in all other ways, they're totally comparable. And you get way more pages in these, and they cost a fraction of the Moleskine sketchbooks. So I think I paid less than $5 for each of these little books. And one of these in a Moleskine is like $12 or $13, I think. Um, so, and the colors are so cute. So I have three of these. I also have three of the larger ones. So in the same color, just the small one. So I have three of these as well. And I also bought um, this, the pocket size um, Stillman and Burn Zeta series. This is the same paper as the Epsilon, but thicker. So the Epsilon is 150 GSM. This is 270 GSM. I bought this because at the time I couldn't find the Epsilon sketchbook. Um, so I will probably, I'm sure I will use this, but it just has less pages in it. Um, but I can use, you know, my um, brush pens, artist brush pens, watercolor, any of that kind of stuff works great in the Zeta series as well. It's a um, smooth paper, so it doesn't have a texture. Um, and it's just really fun. You can do these books. I buy these sketchbooks because they're versatile. You can do any of the mediums in these books. In the Epsilons, you can do anything except super heavy watercolor. So I just like having the versatility when I'm out urban sketching or if I'm traveling or whatever. I like to be able to do anything I want in one book. So that's why I like the Zeta series. This is a larger Epsilon sketchbook that I have not put anything in. Um, 
as you can see, the paper is, I mean, it's thick paper, it's not thin. I would say at least thicker than the Moleskin Art Creation paper. So um, Epsilon series, great cover. I really love these. This is my sticker. It did not come that way. So I got that at the Little River Trading Company in Maryville, Tennessee, which is my home, home, hometown. So this book is Dare to Sketch by Felix Scheinberger. He is one of my favorite artists. Uh, his work, I can't even explain. It's so dynamic. So I'll just give you a little clip through. They're just sketches and he really doesn't spend a ton of time on them, but something about them is just really compelling. So I like this book because it's it's specifically about sketching, urban sketching. And so it talks about composition and drawing what you feel and adding things that aren't there and mistakes. And so this is a fantastic resource book. Not only is it, does it have great advice, but it has awesome artwork in it. Highly recommend this book. So recently I bought a bunch of reference books because um, I just got really tired of trying to find things online that I wanted to paint. The pictures weren't always great or they were a weird angle and I wanted nature pictures just for my journaling and sketching, not, not for sale or anything, but I just wanted um, really good references that were perfectly laid out that I could practice drawing and sketching and and have just a really good resource of large images, well composed, edited with good colors and good lighting. So this book, I love this book, the Smithsonian Handbook of Interesting Insects. So each page is about a different insect. See how big the pictures are though? I mean, this is fantastic for, this is fan, I just changed the page so that I wouldn't gross people out because that one bug was really gross. <laughs> um, so anyway, the pictures are so big and so detailed. They're perfect for reference sketching. So if you want to draw something, but you don't know what to draw, you can just flip open a page in this book and draw whatever pops up. And you can have a whole page in your sketchbook done in a matter of minutes. And you don't have to go Googling for bug pictures or, you know what I mean? It's just a really nice reference to always to have exactly what you need. Also, this book is stitch bound and it lies open really nicely. Um, it's, I mean, it doesn't sit perfectly open, but it's, it's just, it's just really, really high quality book. I highly recommend this book. Smithsonian Handbook of Interesting Insects. Next book is Birds of North America. It, this book is giant, y'all. Look at how big this book is. And it has, as you can imagine, pretty much every bird you can find in North America. It sits open nicely, has really awesome detailed pictures, multiple images. So you can just flip through, find a bird you want to draw, draw it in your sketchbook, easy peasy. I also use these books to identify birds and um, plants and things that I see out on my walks. So it's also handy for that. And so I know if I can't get a good picture of a bird, for example, if I'm out on a walk, I see a bird, it's a new bird I haven't drawn before. Um, if I can't get a good picture of it because it's too far away, I know that I can come back to this book, find the bird and draw it from this book and know that I have all the information. And I also have little notes so I can um, write the notes in my nature journal. So Birds of North America, also excellent book. And the last book is this Eastern Birds of North America. This is the large format edition. I saw this specifically on Sandy Hester's blog. I will post a link to that in the description. I'll post a link to all the stuff in the description. This book is very similar to the last one, except it's only birds for Eastern North America. And the pictures are a little bit smaller, but it gives you a lot of, so it, you know, it explains the differences between the types of the species and it's just a really nice reference. And you can, I mean, you could still draw from these really easily. So, so just the other day, I wanted to know what the birds were that I kept seeing in our backyard. They are sparrows. Um, of course they're sparrows, but I wanted to know which sparrows we had. And so I think we have... These are the ones that we have in our yard. So I'll be adding these to my nature journal shortly. That's why I have them marked off. So that's all the books. Now I'm just going to go through the art supplies really quickly. Um, there's a lot. There's a lot. I have been trying to resist buying new tubes of paint. Um, so there's only a few of those. I'll start with those. So I, I do think I've bought a couple more than this, but I pulled out the ones I could remember. Um, 
So I mostly use M. Graham watercolors, but I do buy Daniel Smith colors when I want to make travel palettes because the Daniel Smith colors actually harden. M. Graham is just hard to travel with and I don't like to risk it. So I do keep Dan uh, Daniel Smith colors around just for my travel palette. So I bought M. Graham Viridian, Cobalt Green, and Daniel Smith Sap Green, Deep Sap Green. I really like this color uh, in a travel palette because it's a really natural dark green. It's great for shadows or like a base green for your nature stuff. You can add some yellow to lighten it. You can add some blue to darken it. It's very versatile. And Viridian I just like because it's a non-staining alternative to um, Thalo Green and the M. Graham version you can actually re-wet it as opposed to many of the other brands. So that's why I got those. I also picked up M. Graham gouache this year. So um, I started with a basic set of five colors, black, white, blue, yellow, and red. So I ended up supplementing with just a few other colors and I keep them in this palette and I just squeeze out um, fresh white when I'm gonna sit down to paint. So M. Graham gouache rewets beautifully. I highly recommend it. I'm very happy with this. I've tried other brands and uh, including Turner and Winsor Newton. I like M. Graham the best by far for its re, re ability. I much prefer to just have my paints out in a palette. Okay, still in the paint zone, I purchased these two sets from Ev Bolt. She's very prolific on YouTube. If you haven't heard of her, where have you been? Um, she sold me her Sonnet watercolor set. She had the one in the yellow tin and I love this yellow tin. So I snapped it up. I also bought her set of White Knight's pastels. To be honest, I have a hard time figuring out how to use pastels, but they're so pretty. I had to. So those have joined my collection. All right, we are out of watercolor and into other things. So I bought this set of Stabilo Boss pastel highlighters mainly for the orange because I saw um, Ham Rib Art, which is, her name is Hazel. She uses the orange pastel highlighter in her sketches for skin tones and I just, I can't even, I had to try it. So I just bought the whole set because I don't have any highlighters anyway other than like Tombow's. So I just bought the set because it was easier. This is a Hobonichi Weeks. I bought this from Jet Pins. So the Weeks has um, an index in the front, which I won't show you that stuff, but I use this as a weight tracker, which is why I'm not showing you. Who wants to tell you your weight? Um, so it has an index in the front. I use that as my tracker. It has monthly, monthly pages for each month. This is for a full year from April to April, this particular book. And then it has weekly spreads. So you get um, a one spread per week. So you have your days on the left and then um, extra note space on the right. And then, so that's for the entire year, April to April, or I guess March to April. And then in the back, you have some extra pages for notes. There's, I think, 75 pages just for notes in the back. So I just really, I can't get over how much I love the Hobonichis. Um, the paper is gorgeous. They're so fun to use. They're fun to, I like to write small. They're fun to write in. Um, so if you are looking for a new planner and you've never used a Hobonichi before, I encourage you to, to check them out. Next up, I will go over the Poscas I bought. This is not all the Poscas I've bought this year, but it's a good representation. So the Poscas that I really like are the PC1 MRs. These are the pin type. So they have a pin nib and I like these because you can write really fine with them. I use these for urban sketching. I was inspired to use these by the artist Lyndon Hayes. I will put a link to his Instagram in my description bar because it is totally not my idea. I am hoping to branch out and do some other things with these. Um, they're a little more unique to my style, but I got them initially because I really loved what he was doing with them and I wanted to try it. So I'll just show you this one. This is a picture of an old um, rusted out car. The Instagram for this is Mozart's Ride. That's what I use for reference. I will link to his account in the description bar. This one is the PC1M, and actually I think that one is the 1M as well. I think I didn't have the pin types when I made this, but that's the idea, using Poscas to create artwork that looks kind of like this. I have all of the PC1MRs. I just brought out a handful for you to see. Um, I have all of the colors of these. 
And I also have all of the colors of the PC1Ms. Um, these have a pointed nib, which I really, really like. Hopefully you can see that. Um, and I bought, I have all of the colors of these pins as well. This is light green. I pulled this one out specific, actually I pulled all of these out specifically because they are, these are colors that are kind of harder to find. So I have a brown, a slate gray, regular gray. Um, this is the red wine color, an orange and a light green. These are kind of, they don't come in the sets. You have to buy them individually, but a lot of people don't sell them. I'm not sure why. I bought all of my sort of rarer Posca colors from the website markersupply.com. They're a small store based out of Nashville. Excellent pricing, excellent shipping. I've had nothing but good experiences with them. I will put a link to them down below. Um, so I really love the 1MRs and the 1Ms. I like the fine point on them. And I discovered recently that the Posca 3Ms you can actually replace the tips with the 1M replacement tips. You can also get the replacement tips at markersupply.com. They're very inexpensive. So I bought the 3M markers, just pulled out the nib that came with them, stuck in the replacement nibs, and I was good to go. So that's a really cool tip because these come with more paint in them as well, I'm pretty sure, because the barrels are, barrels are a bit longer, so you get more paint. So... I have these in the bold colors, so there's like a teal, a navy, a dark red, a magenta, a dark brown, khaki green. Um, I actually have all of the 3M colors now as well. Between the 3Ms and the 1Ms, I have all the colors available between those two sets. The thing about doing art with Poscas is you need kind of three shades per, three values per color. So like you need three blues if you're gonna do something that's blue so that you can do blue highlights, blue midtones, and blue dark tones. So that's why I've gone so all out with the Posca colors. There's there's no mixing, um, which I like about Posca because they kind of limit your color choices. Um, so I'm hoping to get more into Posca art really soon. I um, really, really love these markers. I think they're awesome. And yeah, so I have a ton of Poscas. Okay, I'm gonna, almost to the end now, I'm gonna talk about some pins I bought recently. I really love these Slitchy pins in 0.25. Um, I found out about these from Fran Nerd. I will link to her YouTube. They are the teeniest, tiniest rollerball gel pen you have ever seen, and they write so nice. They're so fun for sketching. So I have a couple of these, those are new. I bought a Twisby Eco fountain pen. This is brand new, I just got this last week. Um, I barely used it. And I filled it with sketch ink in the color Lily, which is like a sepia color. You can see it has some sediment, that's because it's pigment based. You just shake it up and it shakes out. Um, I love these pens because they don't use cartridges. You just fill them up straight from your bottle of ink. I also found a Uni Kuru Toga pencil. This is the Spirited Away edition. I purely bought it because it had no face on it. Let's be real. This is the Uni Jetstream Edge. It came with a 0.28 um, ink filler in it and I swapped it out for a 0.38 because I prefer it. And then I found out that they have these as three-in-ones. I didn't know that before or maybe they weren't out yet. Um, this is just a single color pen. I use it in my planner. It's the only thing I use in my planner and I love it. The 0.38 I find writes much better than the 0.28. The 0.28 is kind of scratchy. So if you're into ballpoint oil-based pens, really nice for sketching too. They're um, waterproof. I like the UniJet Stream. I bought the 40 degree Sailor Fude pen because I wanted to have the opportunity to draw a little finer because as you've seen, I use tiny notebooks sometimes and the larger 55 degree nib is just a little too bold for those tiny drawings. I know you can draw finer, but I would like to draw finer by default as opposed to having to make myself draw finer with that pen. So I just bought the other one and I keep it in my travel kit. Um, I bought these Tombow Furunosuke brush pens recently. This is just a neon red color. And then I bought this one. I was really excited about this one because it's the same thing as the red one. It has a um, flex nib. 
but it has black on one end and gray on the other. It's just so convenient to carry this in my travel kit, so I don't, it takes the place of two pins in one pin. So I really love that one. And the last thing I'll show you is this beautiful jar of color. So the Uniball Signo DX pens are waterproof. They're one of the only gel pens that's waterproof that I know of. The Uniball Vision Needle is supposed to be waterproof, but actually this has to sit for like a day before it's really waterproof. These can sit for like an hour and they're good to go. And I've just really been enjoying sketching with gel pens lately, so I picked up the full set of these. There are 20 colors, I think, and I have them all here. They're all in 0.38. And um, they're just super basic gel pens, but they write really nice. They're fun to use. There's plenty of colors. I really like them. And then, as you know, I love my Poscos. And recently, I don't know why it didn't occur to me sooner, but recently I figured out that the Sakura Jelly Roll Moonlight set is opaque. They're opaque. They're just like Posca gel pens. So I bought a whole set of those to do smaller line art in my sketchbooks. So that's it. That's everything I've bought over the past five months, basically, give or take. Some things are probably not in here that should be, but um, yeah, that's it. I hope you enjoyed my haul video. All the links are in the description and I will see you all very soon. Bye.